Welcome back to the LCS. Five game series, two days in a row. Are you guys not entertained? That's what I'm talking about. Absolutely, man. Energy selecting blue side, heading into this fifth game. You can see a look of... Uh, preponderance with with sniper sorry 100 thieves lost the game so they're the ones who selected blue side yeah gonna try and run this one back what have we seen so far this series because it's been back and forth it looked doomed for a good portion of this game four but energy with back-to-back -back smite steals brought it back this just reminds me of some of their wins that they had during the regular season yeah where it's mm. just like it's doomed i remember the imt game where it's like call it already then Contract comes in with a pretty sick smite steal. But in this one, it's just some of the decisions they've made in fights that has just been great. Like the Drake stacking has been a big positive. And yeah. even though with, yes, there have been some tilting or some poor play from the top side of the map, I think FBI and Huhi has been remaining firm and that has been keeping them in the series. Yeah, and I mean, obviously Contract has had some ups and downs, but I think another story weirdly in draft has been Lee Sin. True. And who gets it? Uh, obviously, I know Medios mentioned on cast that he thinks Lee Sin is just in a good spot right now. But when you think about mm. these two junglers and what they like to do, it really is use early creative pathing to get involved with their lanes. And obviously, we've seen them trying to track each other during that. But I think we've seen some pretty interesting Lee Sin performances today, too. And I'm just looking at the pictures we see on the screen here. It looks to me like both teams are passing the vibe check they going into the game the five, if that, that makes is, sense. That is true. Energy had very almost defeated body language before that game four, Energy. right? But coming off the stage, big smile from Dokla, look of relief from contracts. They're grooving a little bit right now. And then I think 100 Thieves, because of what happened to them on Thursday against Cloud9, just getting completely demolished, I think the quality of which they've played so many of these games, I think it seems like they're able to look past that they let that one slip through their fingers because yes. I think they're actually really confident they can just have another game. They won't have two smite steals happen and they'll win that one. 100%. And I think it's just been them rallying around River. Throughout the series, mm -hmm. River and Quid, especially Quid, have been the ones that have been performing really well on their team. So, like, the Invade that I still remember that they had on contracts, just being able to get the kill, the constant skirmishes that they've had in bot side River that has been working in their favor. I remember the 3v3 top side. Like, everything that 100 Thieves have been doing, they have been on the same page, which they weren't doing in the, the, the last series, but in part, remember, Golden Glue did say that they didn't get a chance to scrim and play with River all too much because of that sickness, and now they're feeling pretty good. Yeah, Quid has had an absolutely phenomenal performance today, and I think you do look to him and River as kind of the heart of this team. I also think, again, when you look at their drafting and how they want to play, in the C9 series, they seemed really lost in terms of like how they wanted to play out their compositions, but today, we're on a solo lane focus and even if i don't necessarily like going so hard on that um i think they know what they want to play and they're really confident in it and that was a hallmark of their play across the the regular season as well and why they ended up tied in record for first second overall absolutely you can see them coming back on stage as well now three of 100 thieves are already in their chairs energy taking just a moment longer all of us predicted a five-game series. True. Yes, we did. So good job, us. It's, it's delivered in a big way, actually. Neither team tilted. I think both teams showed up and showed some strength. Anyone changing their predictions? I was 100 Thieves. Don't look Raz, at me. Raz, Don't I'm look looking at, at me. you. I'm looking at you. Should I flip up, guys? Well, what I was your energy. first prediction? Hey, I had hey. energy. Do you guys think yeah. I should flip to 100 Thieves? Yeah. That was mixed. Yeah. That was mixed. Yeah. I think it's the first time we had such a mixed crowd. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not flip-flopping. I'm staying wow. with energy on this okay. one. Emily? Uh, I mean, I never flip-flop on my predictions. Like I said, I, I feel like I'm good at owning my L's. There know? can be a first. I, I make a lot about, of mistakes. But I, let's talk about why they I do, I do think, yeah, I do think 100 Thieves have looked really comfortable and confident with what they've been locking in. I really like how they've been playing around Quid, around R River. I think this team is very comfortable and confident going into game three. Raz, Bye. why does energy bring it home? Oh my god. So I, I do think that playing better around the comp that they currently have, like I am looking at FBI and Huhi. And even though the start of the series looked pretty poor in how they played through 3v3s, they have slowly gotten better. And I think the, the change within the draft to actually play around uh, Lee Strin skirmishing has just helped them a bit more. So I think that's going to be a reason. Um, and the fact that they have been playing better and they're more experienced in this situation like this. What about contracts, Baron steals? I just heard a stat hot oh, off Baron. the presses. 17 Baron steals in contracts' LCS career. Wow. 
Second only to X Smithy, who's at 18. So one Whoa. more. He tied That's one more. He, he could, he could talk. Hey, contracts. You still have one more in you. <laughs> Energy returning to their seats. I think one thing that's going to be big to watch is which team gets affected by the pressure more. Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing to show up in game one or game two, but once it's game five, in an elimination series, the pressure goes up way higher. 100 Thieves had the highest combined kills per minute of any team in the LCS throughout the regular season. Can they keep that killer instinct in the fifth game? Energy largely disconnected through a lot of the season, but will the pressure bring more focus in that fifth game? I don't know, it's yet to be seen. I I'm still barely on the side of 100 Thieves, but I think we're in for a really exciting game five. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think this is where you could see to Raz's point as to why he didn't want to flip-flop on his prediction. Um, a lot of that playoff experience come through. We talked about how not only does this team have a lot of experience, but they have a lot of experience playing together. Um, even who he being a last-minute addition, he's played with FBI a lot in the past on 100 Thieves, yeah. the team they're facing right now. Um, so I think that's where you would look to that kind of playoff experience and kind of grace under pressure to be able to perform. Yeah, and I do think, specifically, I think it was Third Drake, where they just played a f the, their situation out properly. And I was like, okay, they're on the same page, they're playing it a lot better. Then the, like the, the Drake for, I guess, the, uh, the bot lane race on turret was another play. So I feel like they're currently constantly making better and better decisions that is leading them to a point in game five where they're looking good. We talked about them passing the vibe check. I think they are, so that's where I have it going into the next game. All right, enough talking from us. The players look like they're ready to get in the draft. Let's go to casters. Thank you. Contracts on the verge of making history. Maybe going to tie Smithy with another Baron steal in this one. Raz also making some history. First time he hasn't flip flopped on a prediction. <laughs> I mean, maybe Contracts also passes him. He could steal two Barons in one game and just outright take the yeah, first place. Why not? The award. Also, uh, Raz getting a prediction right is on the line oh, here. Oh, it could happen. It could happen. Time. Oh, <laughs> Raz is getting cooked left and right. <laughs> That's what happens. Raz messes again. See what happens. <laughs> Yeah, like, we messed with him first, but it's fine. <laughs> Honestly, True. I think we should have draft priorities changed. You have to have number one draft priority on either Lee Sin or Rel or something that helps you smite secure objectives. Nudu. Otherwise, yeah, let's get Nudu. Yeah, where's the Nudu? Let's, let's get it. <laughs> Turn this sucker up to 11. Smite secures. Like, how do you even get objectives anymore? You, you literally have to punt the other guy halfway across the map. He needs to be dead or he's gonna steal it. Uh huh. That's that's the rule. We no got... flipping the Baron against contracts anymore. I, I wish they had a stat like how many times Baron's been stolen from them as well. Yeah. You know, how many times have you stolen it? How many times <laughs> have been stolen from you? How many times could my support or top laner have kept the enemy jungle That's the only around? stat I care about. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the how many times that's every time, according to every jungle. Me. <laughs> this is the jungler comfort stat we're, yep. we're creating yep. here. Yeah. All right, well, Vi is still uh, permabanned here. No want, nobody wants to let a Talia Vi through, basically, yeah. is what it has Ooh, been. Ooh, Lee Sin ban. Okay, I like it. I mean, River was nasty on it. There's a Nautilus available. Could see him getting picked up. There's an Ari as well. So do you prefer the Ari side or the Talia side? I love Talia so much. Talia is really strong. I think it requires more setup. What we've been seeing Quid do on the Ari has been pretty hard to bet against. Mm. So. Like, would I normally like the RE first pick? Maybe not, but with what Quid has been playing, like, he has just been so insane. I would probably see it as like a handshake kind of deal. I'm mean, yeah. depending on your mid laners, but if both are available, you can do the trade. Uh, I would have thought Nautilus would go over first pick, but I guess not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Banger! Sorry. This is the sorry. kind of entertainment you can expect if you want to tune into the dive. Poppy is also open go. this game, so there could be a Poppy. <laughs> the producer just humped in my ear. He said, uh, we will not be having Meteos back on the broadcast <laughs> after that. <laughs> so this is your final game. Time to make it count. Eh? Rest in peace. And they did, in fact, even end up thinking Raz gets the last laugh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a producer. It was just Raz. Yeah, 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 Raz yeah. holding the producer at gunpoint. Uh, this is uh, producer Raz here. <laughs> All, All right. right. Well, there's my Talia. Uh, happy to see that one picked up on the other side. Uh, I will say Contracts is a super duper good Talia, too. Sometimes uh, this is not a really a flex pick because the jungler, some jungle duly is not really, uh, you know, they shouldn't have that ability, uh, but this definitely is a flex team. So Kai'Sa potentially taken away here. Earlier in the series, I would have just thought this was a Varus, but because Kai'Sa it feels like it's become such a pivotal pick, they're gonna actually take it away, you know, from that Nautilus, Kai'Sa duo. 
and they are going to be able to grab up some hard engage here. This is something you were talking about, Meteos, after the last game, is yeah. that it felt like 100 Thieves couldn't be the proactive ones because they didn't have any of those go buttons. Uh, it's hard, right? Especially against something like Nico, like Rakan. There's just so much snap engage. If one team has that and the other team doesn't, you know, you, the team who cannot engage feels so much more pressure. Anytime you face check, anytime you walk into fog, you have to respect the fact that they could just go on you at any time. Also, just saying, I said you got to raise priority on Lee Sin and Rel for securing objectives. And River has had a lot of things stolen from him. So if you are the Rel, now you can Q smite. Mm -hmm. Could also be a pick for Ayla though. Pretty good combo there with Kaisa, one of the classics. Jack's going to draw a ban now as I think that's the first band it's gotten so far in this series, but Sniper has been playing it a lot and has been a bit of a thorn in the side of NRG, especially with Dokla here getting fifth pick counter pick. If he doesn't have a really great answer for it, I think the band makes sense. Maybe get him a matchup where he can try to dominate more. That was a real key to victory for Cloud9 over 100 Thieves was the matchups that Fudge was able to orchestrate in the top lane was the damage he was able to do there. So maybe Dokla could get something cooking on red side. Yeah, I'm curious if 100 of these will ban the Cassante. I think both of Energy's wins have been on Cassante. It's definitely a champion, I think, that fits the way Energy wants to play. You know, it has enough agency that Dokla's happy to play it, while also being a champ that can function on weak side. So... I think that would be a pretty smart ban for 100 Thieves. Yeah, and, and Energy here are banning out some of those sniper carry champs. You mm -hmm. know, the, the Olaf following it up too, so it does seem likely. Yeah, when we saw 100 Thieves against Cloud9, there was a lot of Aatrox for Sniper, which wasn't really working out. Uh, that, of course, would still be available. Exante not going to get banned. It is going to be the Varus, so they don't want the Varus as a response. FBI could look towards Zeri. So Smolder Priority has gone absolutely all the way down. No one wants to play it anymore. Uh, it is going to be the Zeri answer here. There's That's no Enchanter behind him to really kind of buff him up, unless they're really cooking and going to move things super crazy around. But uh, it is it is a really strong scaling pick. I don't love this draft from energy so far. It's uh, it's looking a little shaky to me. Is there anything that you think could pull it together? It is going to be Aatrox uh, here for Sniper, kind of as expected when he played against Cloud9. What would you want to see from Dokla to maybe kind of like shore it up if you feel like it's missing something major? I, I don't even know what you'd pick. In. Yes, go Shaco, game five. I feel like Douglas is going to do uh, something not super. Oh, I feel like he's just going to do a Cassante or something again. Yeah, I would kind of expect Cassante again. There it is. All right, so we have the full drafts. You already have Talia, Zin Zhao, Zeri damage. Like, you have plenty of damage already anyway. Um, but the Nocturne is a really interesting one because Nocturne with Ari, with uh, Kaisa here, lots of dive potential, lots of... If the map is open yeah. again, we've had so many of these games with, with spread map, and then it's all about picks and which team is getting the first pick and then t tumbles into these crazy team fights. I have a lot of concerns about if FBI is going to live. Like, there is so much hard engage, so much dive. It feels like Ari... Nocturne, Rel splashing on you, Kaisa's killer instincting in onto you. Um, you know, maybe the hope is that the Zin and the Talia are like killing everyone off as they're putting all that pressure onto FBI, but it feels like a tough game for him to survive in fights. Yeah, I think this is an insane Aatrox angle for Sniper, which would for sure have me a little shaking if I'm energy here, because you Aatrox is good against these tanky, low damage comps, and energy honestly doesn't have that much damage on their comp. Like, all, all their champs kind of need items to do damage, and I don't think Cassante is a great matchup in Aatrox. I think he'll do just fine in that lane. I think for sure, Palafox has to have a really big game this game. Mm -hmm. That that Talia could be uh, extremely pivotal in, if they are to win this one, and it's got to be him. All right, well, we're heading on in. It's game number 500. These energy Kia going up against it. See some top lane cheese. Yeah, everyone from 100 Thieves spreading out across the map and energy sending four members top, wanting to see if they can find any sort of a pick. Oh, they, they showed. Sniper it's, just, it's, just, it's just Doko, though. Yeah. Only Doko showed so far. Oh, now we got who he's shown to. Not gonna Flash on him. <laughs> I like a game five to start out, start out like that. I respect the attempt. I always like when people look for these these uh, level one invades, look for the opportunity. If you have the stronger level one, 
Also, I really like this ward that you saw uh, just be placed by 100 Thieves. This sees when you transition uh, jungle quadrants here for, mm -hmm. for Zin Zhao, and you get a little peek there towards the lane. And after all the spicy trash talk yesterday, we get a Hio in chat from River. <laughs> huh. I do props for him for not being just completely melted down after getting there and <laughs> stolen repeatedly. Like, I would... I would be in the fetal position right now. I mean, he was just—he was just laughing about it. He—he he was completely unfazed. Quinn and River walking off stage. They were walking with the energy members, and they were clearly joking back and forth about it because they were laughing it up, having a good time. This is definitely a, a very good vibes team, which I think you know can be beneficial when you get in these tough spots, right? Where you know maybe someone's just going to get pissed. I don't think that really helps you out. So no, I mean absolutely. Stable. It's, it's very good. It's cool to see. All right, we are going to have Quid, uh, since he cleared that ward, has the level two on first wave. Maybe there's something. Uh, Palfox is pushing it, though, so as long as Palfox doesn't put himself in a bad position while he's pushing, won't get surprised. And Jungler's just clearing opposite sides here. Interesting that River on the Nocturne is clearing from top uh, or from bottom up towards top instead. Yeah, Nocturne generally feels like all you really want to do is just power farm. Maybe you're, you're covering some ganks, you know, you're looking to respond a little bit, but generally speaking, you just want to get to six and make that first move with your ultimate really pay off. But that's why it's a little surprising he didn't start Raptors yeah. uh, for the earlier Raptor respawn, because usually if you're trying for the, the super quick, then, then you do that. But maybe it is this like desyncing because you think that Xin Zhao is going to try on that timer to come for your Raptors. Yeah, that's what Medius was talking about earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah, it... It's something Spika mentioned to me too when we were talking about jungle is he said in Soul Queue he's pretty much always switched to starting buffs Contract. just because that four minute invade. Sniper, three talent strike, the knockup is going to be there and it wasn't flash and now Sniper may have flashed too late. Pathmaker comes in from Dokla. They don't have the damage. But he's going to be able to survive. But they also don't overstay and die in there. It does mean that Nocturne here though, River is going to have a lot of freedom because Contract just showed up there. Uh, got chunked out and has to go back to base now. I wonder, you know, could contracts have flashed in for one more auto? You know, would it have been worth it? Uh, at the end of the day, they do get the flash. They don't use any summoners, so not that bad, but it buys a lot of time for Nocturne. And it's game five, and energy, a lot of their big mistakes have been over chasing. That's true. So the coaches even mentioned talking to them and saying, we need to slow it down a little bit. So a little but, bit of but it, is that good or bad, right? If you lose that killer instinct, you have to have confidence in your plays. If it's the right play, you should go for it, whether it didn't work last time or not. Because that's something that Contract has also talked about, you know, when they were talking about Worlds last year. So we're going to watch this one more time. How close is it? It's yeah, close. I'm looking at it. I don't think Flash. Yeah. I, I was surprised Doklet went in here, and I'm also surprised he didn't die for going in there. Yeah, the, the, the Q2 just had been used right there for uh, Sniper. That was very, very close. Yeah, I would say... Uh... Happy they didn't flash. I think yeah. That, yeah, I'm happy they didn't flash, and I think that they're pretty happy that didn't go worse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. I thought the W in King Sunday was gonna be disaster. Yeah. yeah, well, at the end of the day, it does work out. He, I think he barely got out of turret range for that second shot, and he didn't even pop the ghost, so gonna be happy about it. At the end of the day, not gonna mean that much, I think, on either side. Would be nice to get Doku going early. As it uh, feels like when one of them gets ahead, it usually has been Sniper. FBI with the call start here, just farming up down on that bottom side. Has been a very comfortable lane for them thus far. Of course, the way uh -huh. it's back towards me. <laughs> See, it's always the it's always the next step of the, the evolution of, all right, well, if you are starting your, uh, your buffs, then it, it's going to be the four and a half minute respawn for Raptors. And Contracts ends up getting Raptors anyway. Yeah, and we're actually seeing a bit of a bot gap come in already. Meech had to take a pretty rough recall and pull River to cover. Um, there's nice. Oh, flashing forward. He's going to be able to get out of there. This yeah. Contrax goes in aggressive. They had the faster roam from Huhi, and they were able to take advantage of it. Good job there. Contracts playing around the spell shield. But it is just going to be flash for flash traded. It's so fun in game number five with how tense it is and how close some of these plays are. It feels like we, we keep getting a little bit of a taste of how aggressive the series has been overall. But nobody wanting to make the first true all in mm -hmm. and, and first true commitment. So both teams have a little bit of game five history. 100 Thieves actually five and five throughout their orgs history in game fives. Uh, whereas Energy just having played the one in summer since they've been back, obviously, they are one and oh in those game fives.
All right, interesting now too, always is, you know, grubs after you do have the uh, the early gank from contract. So Nocturne gets one grub right now while top Don't fight. Don't going all out. He has level six. Sniper's trying to go back to get it, but is it going to be in time? I don't think so. It's a first blood for Dokla. Solo kill thanks to the early flash they forced before. Nocturne couldn't even finish the grub either. So that's just going to be a huge solo bolo for big dokes and energy get to move in. They get one grub. They get chased off. Here comes the fight, though. In comes the Weaver Wall. Pallet Fox is going to arrive. Quick gets over the side. Dashes forward. Lands the charm. Contracts is out of there. Here comes Dope Look, and he bail him out. Ayla going to have to flash. Quid needs to get over the wall. He has two charges of the Spirit Rush. Will be able to do it, but he's going to go back in. He's crazy. Who he's too healthy for that. Quinn now gonna have to flash, but he's on the wrong side of the map. I don't know if he can get out of there. Sniper though, he's six and he's back. He wants to get some payback here on the NRG. Who he will flash out, but Dokla, no such luck for him. He's got no mana and nowhere to go. Sniper should be able to get this one back and will finally be able to finish it off. That's a shutdown for Sniper. Very scrappy stuff up around the grubs. Yeah, you know, at first when I saw Quid ult back in it, I thought he was just, you know, trying to die, but he was actually making time for Sniper to get there, which was very heads up play. Definitely gets him back into the game, getting that shutdown on Dokla. All right, here's another look at it starting out. And they, they have the pings really early on too. So Quid comes down with Ayla. You're looking at uh, Sniper running from base two for that timer for the big delay. Once Palafox walls in, they all focus onto contracts, take him down first because they know he has no flash, no way out. And then it's it's the brawl at the back of the pit where the seismic shove does get river. But here's the moment you're talking about. Pit goes back in and then flashes over because Sniper, if you're watching the minimap the whole time, made it all the way up and he's got Aatrox ult. Yeah, and Palafox here actually goes hunting for Quid instead of helping. He may have been able to, you know, push them back and let Dokla get out. So a bit of a mistake there. Got too hungry to kill Quid. Yeah, that's a pretty big shutdown though. As he said, he does get the Aatrox back into it a bit. Doku obviously is still going to have a bit of a gold advantage. And he is looking good in this top lane matchup thus far. Has been a pretty big X-Factor on the Cassante in a number of team fights. Been able to zero out carries, find big plays. Um, but quietly, things looking good for FBI on the Zeri pick. And he's going to be scaling up and does have a pretty nice CS advantage. And I do like the, the early sheen here too for Dokla. This thing got reduced 100 gold in price. So as a component, it's actually a really efficient component nowadays mm -hmm. uh, with the ability haste with, of course, the proc that you get. And the proc stays the same damage once you turn it into Iceborne. You just get the extra slow. Yep. And it fits so well into his trading pattern, right? Because you're going forward for these quick trades. You're being able to proc the Rasp, proc the sheen on that same play. Nice little flick back there from Palafox with his Isaac shove, but not going to amount to much of anything. And mid lane looking pretty much dead even thus far. Have to track though. River is level six, has the paranoia available. As Doka's going to look with that Pathmaker forward. I do believe we saw contracts get into the brush behind him, but the vision has been toggled, so we don't know for sure. All right, well, we'll see if there's going to be any sort of a play for this next. Uh, objective, you know, it has been a lot of play around grubs so far throughout this series. We'll see if anyone wants to kind of make the trip back up there. As the third grub was never even finished off, so it should still be sitting there. Both teams just sitting on one grub piece. No one has made a move towards the dragon. It's been all about, you know, trying to play for gold, trying to play more heavily towards top lane and around that grub so far this game. Yep, Nocturne does have the ulti, so energy's not going to want to spread themselves too thin. They're probably, I wouldn't be surprised if they looked for a dragon play soon, just. Because when you're up against champs like Nocturne and Evelyn and stuff who have this like, you know, invisible pressure, if you can bait them to come to a fight, then the pressure is kind of relieved since so you know where they're going to be. What would you like to see River do with his first ultimate? You know, do you think it's important that he goes towards Azari, try to slow him down, or really is it more of just uh, utilize wherever you see the opportunity? I would say it's opportunity based, just, you know, if you see a good situation for it. Fighting around bushes in these river skirmishes is always good. Yeah, I feel like you either go to Quid or you go to Ayla uh, rather than their, just their target. If you go solo on Flash, Cleanse, Zeri, then it's not going to be anything more than summoner spells there. So looks like they actually have a pretty good early lead on the health bar here. Even though energy contracts are waiting around, look at who he walking. He's so far on the Nautilus. Yeah, they just burn it and finish. Energy kind of fishing around. Maybe somebody gets a little lazy and, and walking back towards bottom. Uh, but nobody is going to do that, so energy don't get anything here. Yeah, contracts covering the bot lane as they do push that in. Again, 
a lot of his job is going to be trying to anticipate where the angles could be for that nocturne and be there before the play does break out of course we know that river is just kind of power farming it up is 20 cs ahead as quit making a roam up towards top lane we'll see i think like it's kind of been given away here as snipers just charging forward so the early ghost is going to be popped by dokla he is out of there sniper walking past those minions you know every single time is the Cassante. someone's there yeah it wasn't the most subtle gang <laughs> Can't get the ghost, I guess. Yeah, all for ghost trade, not the worst. Meanwhile, it is gonna allow for cross map play for energy, but there are wards that will see the cross map play start. So right now, the wards see contracts and power fox moving. And so I don't think there is gonna really be an opportunity since even though 100 Thieves, yeah, you know, Quid goes up top side, then you have kind of the seesaw effect of Summoner's Rift. They've got plenty of wards. And so the vision allows them to play safe on the other half of the map. If you look at the jungle situation now, River's just creating an advantage by farming. Like, mm -hmm. it's so much pressure on Contracts if he's not showing and he's not alting because Contracts, anytime you go to a camp, you're like, oh, is my lane going to get alted? I kind of should be there. You know, I don't want to be taking my wolves while my bot lane's getting alted. So he just ends up not farming and falling behind. Yeah, yeah, it's that implied pressure, as you say. You know, if you if you spend the alt, then all right, he doesn't have to worry about anything for a couple of minutes. So uh, that is definitely an, an upside. If there's not a guaranteed alt, hey, just don't use it. And contract is kind of stuck on guard duty. I would like to see energy maybe look for some pressure toward top lane. Aatrox, especially when he builds this way, is really squishy and diveable. So I think that would be a pretty good uh, play to go for, just to at least make Nocturne show himself take away some of this pressure. Yeah, especially with them showing on wards right now with the invade on bottom side. But 100 Thieves, because of that extra pressure, they're gonna get up to tower, get turret plate money. Meanwhile, Contracts up in the Void Grubs over here to finish that one off and get the Scuttle. But maybe they go for that Aatrox, uh, you know, at least the pressure on the Aatrox to push them off tower that yeah. you were talking about. They're Teleboxes. listening to us. I zoned them off. And they are going to be able to push them away for it. Nah, one barely any. Minutes, barely anything as Dokal will TP down towards bot. And as is required, we've got a new item here for Kaisa. Did go for Kraken first, so we've seen a couple shivs. Now he's got to mix it up. Fearless Kaisa builds. <laughs> uh, as, as far as builds, though, uh, Nocturne is, is pretty fun because you have the, the choice between, like, the older style of the Stridebreaker, Stridebreaker. Which, which is pretty good now, or I love the Eclipse Rush into uh, Experimental Hexplate because Eclipse is... It, the shield is off of uh, skills, off of bonus a, uh, AD, and Nocturne, when your Q is cast and you get a bunch of extra on the trail, and then you proc it, it feels so good to get a really big shield. So a lot of survivability on a very cheap item power spike there too, which sometimes like you time it with your first ultimate, but this game has been a lot safer, so they haven't actually used it yet. Yeah, I was... Looking at Nocturne's runes, and he's actually not running Ultimate Hunter this game. Mm. And I guess if you're just never pressing your ultimate, you don't <laughs> have to worry about the cooldown on it. You, you wait until you have rank two ultimate to press it first. <laughs> so it's that's always the worst feeling when you're like level ten point nine, and uh, like you uh, you should ult, but you don't want to. Uh, I guess I'll just two. wait a little bit longer. Yeah, my, we can get ace. Yeah. I'll have less cooldown on my next one. <laughs> All right. Well. Some of the major item completions have come through here. Profane Hydra done up in the top lane. Dokla already done his Iceborne, though, at the same time. Plus, he has the Tier 2 boots and the Bramble Vest. So Dokla really looking good up in the top lane. Zeri is going to be the Shiv Rush, kind of as expected. And Malignant's first here again for Quid. We really don't see any variation from the Ari builds until the second item, where we've seen a couple different looks. I don't actually... Have we even seen the Lich Bane today, though? It feels like it's been... We saw Shrelius one game. Uh, we've been seeing, you know, kind of more Bursty builds the other game, but I can't remember if we saw Lich Bane yet. I don't, I don't believe so. I think we've yeah. seen Horizon Focus, which, you know, I can understand why. It's mm -hmm. it's a lot cheaper. It's, I think, 2,700 as opposed to Lich Bane's 31. So you definitely get it online earlier and get your other items. Very passive game five though, especially compared to the pace that has been set throughout the rest of the series where it's been very, very scrappy. No one really pulling the trigger. At what point are you kind of getting worried about the fact that as Nocturne, you still have not used your ultimate. I mean, he's farming well, but still it's like, I always find this champion is way harder to team fight on as you get later on in the game, um, where you're at that point where it's like, okay, the soul laners are getting way too much XP. You're kind of starting to fall behind. You don't always have time to power farm. It can be difficult later on. Yeah, I wouldn't be super worried about like my number of ults when I'm playing Nocturne, but you would just you don't want to be missing opportunities to ult. Uh, but just sending it for fun, just to say you did it, of is, course, of is course, not super useful. Um, I would I guess the question is more: Do you think that they can get outscaled? Like, is there that concern if you're just kind of AFK farming from this point? Whose spot do you favor? Because if you don't favor the Nocturne spot, then of course he needs to find angles, and now he's going to be forced to flash out. Oh wow, that was so close. He's almost in Nautilus alt range. 
And Hunter Thieves looking like they're posturing here to potentially re-engage. There goes the Paranoia, but he's going to be knocked back by the Crescent Guard, but Quid dashes inside it and lands the charm. Palafox on the other side getting a lot of damage done. It's Ayla who's down first. Dokla goes all out on Meech, but now he's got to run. In comes Quid. There's the Unstoppable, beautifully timed by Dokla. Has been on point all series long with those Pathmakers. Doesn't feel like he's missed a single CC. And good safety here from Contracts. Like, they go on the Zin, but he pops his ult. He goes, flashes back into the safety of the Talia Rocks. Energy they get the kill on the Ayla. They get the dragon here as well. They will even that up. And we have our first, like, major gold lead, major move in this entire game five. Exactly. And I like what Energy did there. They just took the fight directly on Nocturne. You don't have to worry about his ultimate when you're engaging on him. Uh, Hunter Thieves wasn't really the cleanest engage. No. Yeah. They go Nocturne ultimate and then try and engage with the Ari to follow up on the Zin. But Zin charges and then flashes. And guess what? They get the kill onto your support. Even though Dokla kind of goes off on the side here, he, he pushed the Kai'Sa out and gets out safe over the wall. I just feel like Nocturne are on, Nocturne all being used on a contract. It's so low expected value when contracts, you know, has the Crescent Guard. Quid even got inside the Crescent Guard, landed the charm, but it's just they're not even close to having that much damage. And it meant that Zeri's untouched, Palafox is untouched. It's hard to win a fight in that position. Yeah, one thing that's kind of interesting in Season 14 is they removed a lot of the bushes between mid lane and Dragon Baron areas, which before was one of Nocturne's best spots to fight. Oh, you... could be a oh, dive here. There's going to be a thought. TP coming in as a response. I think it will dissipate as there's enough of a response, so you can continue. Yeah, well, uh, with less bushes, one of the biggest advantages of Nocturne all is you lose the shared vision with your team, so any wards and bushes are just gone. So, you know, it's very hard to fight or just attack anyone. Yeah, and people talk so much, obviously, about Nocturne Competitive. The old combo used to be like, oh, it's Nocturne Cannon. It's Nocturne plus Flanker, basically. You turn off the lights, it's hard to spot that Flanker. So we'll see if they can set anything up with that, you know, with Quid or for Sniper, making that play happen. Dokla has been left alone. Hunter Thieves are in the area, but it's a tough dive to make happen. He is a very tanky Gasante at this point in the game. And Energy are rushing out of base there to cover in case of any sort of aggressive move from Hunter Thieves. I, I would like to see Energy keep the pressure on Aatrox. It seems like they're kind of taking the pressure off of him a little bit uh, because he's just so squishy. You can pretty much force a play on him with any two members. Slowly chipping away here. Energy with the Siege. Get a large portion of the mid lane turret, but doesn't quite fall. And so Sniper gets to walk right back down to that bottom lane. He had like half roamed up the river uh, mm -hmm. in case they hard committed to it, but no hard commitment there from energy. Uh, just pretty safe siege with the Zeri and the Talia. Retake on the river here though, 400 thieves. They clean it out on vision and they've got another Nocturne ultimate locked up. Level two now with his level 11 achieved, rank two in the ultimate, and he is going for the stride breaker next. Obviously, since he's not spamming his ultimate, doesn't really need the extra uh, ultimate ability haste from experimental hexplate. And we'll have to see as this game, it feels like it's gonna be one that kind of comes down to objectives, but at the same time, it is the Chemtech Soul, which really is by far the least desirable one. So both teams may be willing to say, eh, we'll just kind of give it up. There's one dragon apiece, it's already 20 minutes. Even if you've got Soul, it'd be super late and kind of who really cares? So this can be one of those games that becomes very passive and looking for those plays. Uh, he's Dokla, but Quid just gonna be able to pop the LT and back right off. I think both teams are feeling a little bit hesitant here. You know, it is game five, they know. You lose this game, your season is over. And it can be tough in that situation because even just mentally, you know, you don't want to be the guy who loses your team the game. Yeah, we've definitely seen uh, both teams kind of take their foot off the gas for this one. Partially due to the champions, like Nocturne's not really the same as Lee Sin. Um, but I think also, yeah, there's a lot of hesitation. That's true. One is blind and the other blinds the other team. True. Key difference. All right, Harold's gonna get popped here in mid. We'll see if Meech and Ayla can walk it forward, but it looks like it's kind of just a freebie given over to NRG as that Harold is dropped pretty late and no defense for it. So not even gonna get one charge and they're actually the ones who lose the tower in mid after dropping the Herald there, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, no drift. <laughs> I would look on the timer too and see if it was like- uh, I think it was about to expire. Automatic uh, drop out. It's actually a pretty nice change. It that it just pops out of you uh, when the... Where'd that come from? When that time <laughs> runs out. Who put that there? All right, the hook going to be going in. There's the death charge onto River. River flashes out. The locket should keep him alive. But in goes Contracts onto Sniper. Blast Cone will get into safety. 
River narrowly survives thanks to the flash and the locket there from Ayla. They get the TP out from Quid. Energy finding a window to put a little bit of pressure there on the river. It's always interesting because an hour 30 seconds ahead of Dragon and Nocturne, a lot of times you want to early flash when you have your fear on the kill target so that they'll stay in range and they won't be able to flash out of it. Like maybe that becomes a thing uh, with his flash not being down, but he did save his ultimate here. He didn't like panic use it and, and try and cover vision or anything. So 100 Thieves are still going to move into the river. Sniper does have his teleport already. Yeah, we'll see. Charm gonna be able to land there on the who he's getting low, but in comes the Weaver Wall to try to section them off. The lights get turned out and the TPs are coming in. It's a flash retreat here from Energy. They're trying to get out of there. Dopeless behind him, but doesn't even matter. His team is just getting erased as Quid in the back line once again. It's a story as old as time. Quid and Sniper into the back line, crush down the carries, and Energy gets eviscerated. Massive four for zero there. That was so weird looking. Who he was just shrugging off all this damage he was taking going in. It's yeah. like he was expecting to just go for this hard engage uh, and they kind of just got cleaned. And now it's Baron on the table here. Such a costly fight. It's a really late one in the game. It's a slow start. And then when you lose it, it's not just the team fight. It's likely the Baron. Dokla's here. We'll see if he can try to do anything to delay to buy some time. Who he's back as well, but there's no angle to get anything done. It's a freebie there for 100 Thieves, and they secure the first major lead of this game five. I feel like we can definitely see the difference of the pressure of game five and, and people uh, playing way slower than before. But who he, after he takes the big chunk, he just still walks going. up, yeah, hooks in, contracts goes in as well, but then Nocturne Ultimate just immediately turns it around and they chase through right after him. And look at that engage from Ayla on the side. Both the carries were sectioned off from their team, and Ayla flashes, crashes down, hits the Megastorm on both FBI and Palafox. That was so big. No protection for the carries, and they are very happy about that one. And we're back to live. There's a dredge line connecting. In comes the Death Charge. It's going to be immune by the Spell Shield from River. But on the other side, it's Ayla going down as Energy getting one back. FBI trying to go forward here. Pops the Zeriel, but there's the ulti and onto him. And it's enough to knock him down. Quinn again getting the resets. And here comes Sniper from the top ropes looking to drop the hammer. Can't find anyone on the backside, but it doesn't even matter. Energy choose the fight, but it's 100 Thieves that finish it. And since they have Baron from the previous one, they're just going to take towers now. So much gold going into their pockets. They split into the mid lane and a bottom lane push. That's one tower bot. Now one tower mid. Second one bot here going to fall pretty quickly too. Looks like it's going to be a lot of gold. Yeah, I mean, after such a tense early game, both teams kind of playing footsies. It's just completely broke open for 100 Thieves. Yeah, this is this is looking almost untenable. It's, it's pretty rough to think how they're going to be able to come back from this position. They need kind of a, the Zeri moment or something, but we can watch it one more time. The Dragon was secured and they just go for the fight. Yeah, they go for the flash initiation onto the rel, uh, and the rel kind of bouncing back there. But contracts moved up on the Zin, and he used his ultimate. But fear goes off as he's uh, as it expires, and then River just uses Nocturne ultimate to the other side of the team fight, and, and the rest of the team chases. Quinn had a beautiful flash charm there. It looked like to follow up, like everyone piled in on FBI and just kind of hundred to zeroed him at yeah. the back end of that fight. Oh, Ayla. Threatening potentially here for a dive. They could be one bad fight away from this game ending with Baron there with them being pushed in. Palfox getting low and the dive could be on the table if they're not careful. Rest River definitely threatening. Yep. The energy's hope is probably just Dokla at this point. Uh, he's got TP. He could look for something, but with a team as mobile as Hunter Thieves are, it's going to be hard for him to get a lot done in these fights. Yeah, definitely uh, not too many easy angles. Uh, they're going to have to work some magic here. Energy have done so previously with some Baron steals, but 100 Thieves still wearing the previous one and just pushing in is so much pressure so early into the game. We're, we're barely at 25 minutes yeah. here. This, this, this pace for this game just exploded. I feel like we are for sure just seeing so much of a difference though, the, the game five kind of the effect on your mentality. Absolutely. I mean, that one team fight just went so bad for energy. And when that's the first one that you pick and it's post 20 minutes, you lose the Baron off the back of it. It is really disheartening. When I mean, they came into this game with a Aurora and it kind of feels like they're going out with a whimper as they haven't really been able to get much of anything going in this game five. Yeah, it's definitely been hard. You know, they weren't able to find a whole lot of early plays against the Nocturne. He was able to farm up. They felt a lot of pressure from his ult being available. 
I, I really wonder, you know, if energy had smolder instead of Zeri, would this game look different? I don't know. I mean, most smolders, even if they're stacking pretty slow, usually get it by around 26 minutes. Yeah. So I feel like if they had, then you probably would be getting that around now. Uh, maybe we'll see some actual Zeri stuff soon, but we definitely haven't so far. As you mentioned, you know, the, the immediate deletion in the previous one. I mean, it's just tough because it kind of feels like they lost the game at a point where Smolder wouldn't have the stacks anyway, right? You know, that, that major mistake in that team fight I was at about 21 minutes, and don't think the FBI would have had it either way. We'll yeah. see if he can make something happen with the champion he's picked, though. Obviously, they are locked in here, and they need to find a way to come back if they want to complete what would be a pretty incredible comeback after a bit of heroics in the late game in game four push themselves to game five but this feels like this is like a 35 40 minute game state where you're really on the back foot we're 26 minutes in and they're having to seed all their tier twos they have given five towers since that team fight in baron went yeah. over that that baron was so much value i mean this is crazy this is a, a 7.8k gold lead uh, energy was in a pretty good spot prior to that, but now you look over on the other side, Quid is a full item ahead of Palafox. And I feel like we've been saying that a few times today, as Palafox, you know, has been trying his best, has been finding some good moments, but Quid, every single team fight, seems to find an angle, seems to find a way to really have a huge impact. All right, we are at the time now where you send all resources down like one side lane for energy and hope that you get a bounty. Uh, because there are a lot of bounties on people's heads and not a good chance of winning a straight up team fight. You are so heavily out itemized now mm -hmm. with the massive gold difference. Yeah, it's, it's really just Dokla that's even in gold, but it's like Sane's not going to 1v9 this fight, right? You know, your carries are so threatened. There's a lot of ways for 100 Thieves to reach the back line to be able to put pressure on Zeri and Palafox. Even in the even game, I think it's very hard for Palafox and, and FBI to carry this. But when you're AK behind, it's just so tough for FBI to actually be able to stay alive long enough to get value out of this area. Contracts is going to need se several Baron seals. <laughs> All right. Here's one coming in. He's slithering up. There yeah. Is. He's setting himself up to break Xmithy's record in this one. <laughs> chain baron steals yeah back to back to back he probably needs it he probably needs at least two uh, to be able to claw this one back we'll see if they can find any late game heroics but it's 100 thieves immediately back up towards that top side looking to clean out the vision here around this baron it's something they can definitely threaten i mean this is on hit kaisa it's actually blade of rune king coming in which is a little bit surprising um but definitely high amount of on hit really high dps they can crush this baron and it's so it's so annoying too with verdant barrier like a component giving oh, you this maybe getting oh. caught doku's gonna look here do they force it there's the killer instinct used defensively paranoia gonna get popped doku's gotta run as they will pull back world editor has been popped and in goes river and he's on the fbi he's trying to finish him off fbi trying to cut it out the blast gun will keep him alive but dokla in the midst of everyone who he about to go down dokla trying to pull off a miracle meets barely surviving but Meech is down to dokla Dodge and on the, the other side man. river is still fighting but he's gonna lose out there sniper going forward sniper and quid will finally take down dokla who tries to go for something heroic, does at least get one, but at the end of the day, it's one for two, and it's 100 Thieves marching on the Baron. Yeah, and Contracts is marching over for the steal. The, it's the, time. The foretold steal, here he comes. We'll see, he's got no wards in pocket, he has a sweeper, he's got no vision. He can W it. He's gonna have to try to W over the wall, see if he can find something. There's the blue Whoa. trinket popped, he saw it, but I don't think there's any sort of an yeah. angle, he doesn't think there is either. 100 Thieves claim the Baron scrappy fight there that Energy chose, but now it's a 10k gold lead. Award goes to Ayla for going over and actually keeping him out. Another uh, another look at this one though, because Dokla does end up taking down Meech uh, in the back line here, but look at the escape from Zeri. Quid jumps in with his ulti, it's the flash from Sniper, and River tries to follow, but the super blast cone barely uh, gives him his life back. FBI took so much damage there immediately. Aatrox flashed in on him yeah. as soon as Nocturne him with the ulti, and he's just out of the fight entirely. That's what I mean. When you're that far behind, it's like, how, how do you team fight? Nocturne ult plus like a barely a little bit of damage. Quid didn't even get back there on him. Uh, and he is just out of there. Dokla, maybe he's just going to try to take this fight. I mean, you've got to go for desperate plays now. Desperate times, call for desperate measures. The light's going to get turned off. Everyone coming in here from NRG, but at the same time, here comes the cavalry from the 100 Thieves side. The world ender's going to get popped. Sniper gets scooped back into the team, but will just dash over the wall. It is a disengage. They do at least force a couple ulties. That's Aatrox and Nocturne with no ult. 
I can't believe River slipped out of there. That was five people on a flashless nocturne, and he just stride no. broke just his way Just turn out. out the lights and walk out to the rest of your team. I think they were worried that if they fully committed the time to actually kill him, that 100 teams would arrive, kill them off, and the game's over, right? And and that's that difficult position that they're in. One mistake ends the game. It is going to make you maybe that bit more gun shy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they knew Quid was topside. They didn't know how, like, how far along he was. So a little bit... Uh... A lot to lose, actually, here, trying to defend now versus Baron. Yeah, the Baron buff still going to be active here for over a minute. Ohi may be going to look for an angle, but you choose the wrong one. You go into your death. That could be the end of the season for energy. We're so far down. You know, have really had an up and down year so far this year, not finding the success that they wanted. Where 100 Thieves on the other side have really surpassed all expectations. You know, they had an incredible regular season. People had them power ranked generally pretty low and were able to finish in a tie for first place at the end of the regular season. Got taken out very handily by Cloud9, but now a great bounce back series for them. Looking like they're on the verge of eliminating the defending champions here in the LCS. Potentially one fight away from doing it. All right, they're ping pong in between uh, side lanes and mid now. Sniper and Quid. We'll be able to get the waves at the same time, but the rest of the team that was holding mid lane back off on their pressure. So for now, the defense holds. Yeah, 100 Thieves don't want to keep pressuring without Baron. Kind of understandable, you know, game five, don't want to throw the game. Can go spend all your money. Dragon coming up fairly shortly as well. Go collect every single piece on the map. They know if energy step out into the open territory away from those towers at all, they get to immediately engage on them again. Quid picking up the mage eyes, feeling confident, looking to put the finishing touches on what has been an absolutely amazing series from him. Uh, I have you have to think that he would be probably player of the series. He's been really, really outstanding. River having a great series as well, but those two as a duo have been looking amazing. And it has been crazy to see how quickly I feel like Quid developed. You know, last year people were telling me he's good in scrims, he's not showing it on stage. But I feel like you hear that so often and it doesn't always pan out. For him to see this much improvement, like this meteoric of a rise, to go from someone that people were saying, does he even deserve a spot on a team to does he deserve to be the MVP is a crazy change in conversation and narrative around one of the most exciting young players in the LCS. Massive improvement from year to year. Absolutely. I mean, I think when most people heard that 100 Thieves was replacing their entire roster except Quid, people were like, wait, you got that backwards. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, clearly they made the right choice. And it's been fun to see a lot of the young players, I think, really stepping up across the league. I have been having great splits. I think Meech quietly has been really solid. 400 Thieves uh, getting done when he needs to get done for the team. And Sniper, of course, has been a big standout. It is Rookie of the Year, not Rookie of the Splits. So there won't be he's, voting done on he's that. He's not but, quietly uh, been having a good uh, good year. Very loudly. Very loudly Have with we... many solo kills. Uh -huh. uh, but I feel like it's <laughs> obviously it's pretty early to say it, but it feels like he is a massive favorite to win Rookie of the Year, which will obviously be done after summer uh, does conclude. Okay. Still again, back into the 1-3-1, one, one, the classic. Yeah. 100 Thieves cleaning the jungle, checking off every box as they march towards the Nexus in game number five here, the pivotal game. Ah, they missed a couple in their cleaning duty and then one is also replaced. Energy's still looking for these surprise plays. You know, they're always yeah. looking for the massive comeback play. That's how they got this reputation. And it feels like 100 Thieves just want to play for Baron, right? They're not actually willing to, to risk anything on any sort of aggressive dive. They're massively ahead, they know it. They are just going to look to play for Baron and likely play for the turn, and they do have a very strong one. So it's going to be up to Energy to try to find a way to maintain enough defensive vision that they at least have a chance to be able to approach the Baron, to know that it's going on, maybe find a Miracle Seal, maybe find a Miracle Fight, which could be the beginnings of a potential comeback. I do like the way that 100 Thieves has had deep control. I think they might be giving energy a bit of a window here, allowing them to walk through their jungle. It, when you're controlling Baron, this is generally when you want to fight the other team, when they're walking through your vision, face checking everything. But uh, they're actually just going to let energy clear their wards so they can go buy and get more items. Death Cap has been completed now for Palafox. Of course, he's still very far behind as far as the items are concerned. Really, everyone is on energy besides Dokla, but um, Palafox and, and FBI, a lot of pressure on these guys to be able to make it happen in the team fights. They're really the only ones who can get the damage done. As Hunter Thieves already onto the Baron, is spotted out by that blue trinket. 
They're going to try to find their way over to it. They don't have great vision. They know it's being done. They spot Quid, though, with that vision plan. Going to be able to sweep him out and know that he is looking for it. The light's going to get turned off, though. Are they going to go in with this? Dokla split from the team, but the rest of the, uh, the squad is all together, and Contrax is going forward. Is it going to be a flip again? Can Contrax pull it off? He can't. Contrax is looking like he's going to fall. The smite secured there this time by River, and the first kill goes the way of 100 Thieves. They want more. Flash in from Ail. It's the crash down. It's the Magnet Storm, and it's the end of NRG as 100 Thieves pile in. It's a triple already for Quinn. Is he going to get the Quadra? Of course he is. 100 Thieves crush through the fight. They silence the doubters. They take out the defending LCS champions. And they have got this game on lock. 100 Thieves. All that's left is the turret destruction here. Every member of energy are in the dirt. Game five here, 100 Thieves will stand tall. What an incredible finish to an incredible series there from 100 Thieves. So many questions about this young team were posed after their loss to C9, and they answer them all. Quid, Sniper, River, these guys are legit. Meech and Ayla playing a good series as well. That last game was absolutely dominating. They made it look easy in the final one. Can definitely hold their heads high and be really happy with this performance, you know, vindicating that their regular season was deserved, that this was not a fluke. They're not just a scrim team. They get a big playoff win and they keep their LCS championship hopes alive. What a series for Quid. Oof. He really just won behind this one. I mean, like the rest of 100 Thieves played well too, but Quid just absolute standout performance. Huge props to him. While carrying multiple games where he doesn't die a single time. And again, he ends this game with a fully stacked 25 stacks Medjai's. Again, another deathless one. He doesn't even give the fountain a shot. <laughs> so much restraints. They're never diving in. Yeah, this is this is insane. It's definitely the, the making of a new star in the LCS. As Quid has been an absolute monster all season long. Continues that here. Of course, our break for energy. Defending champions had a great performance at Worlds. Really, we're looking to continue that. And perhaps the pressure getting to them a bit. Never really able to find their footing here like they did last summer. And unfortunately, they're going to have to try again this year in summer to try to make something happen. Yep. Not a not a total loss for energy. I think, you know, coming into this season, the expectations were higher because of how they did last year. But, I mean, they got it to game five. They, they were close. Didn't quite get it together, but by no means a failure or anything. I think that was also just wild to me how contracts actually got into Baron again. And, and was in there for a possible spike. Yeah, if he got that, that would have been it, so scripted. Like, so, that would have been so rigged. So Quid, Quid used Ari ultimate to get down there and try and charm him, and the, and the charm would block the charge. But he got through, and and River gets to say, hey, I did outsmite him on this one fair fight. Yeah, incredible finish to an incredible series there from Quid. And we're going to be joining Emily, River, and Quid on stage for an interview. Hello, I am here with Quid and River from 100 Thieves. Hello. Hello. Chikamnida. <laughs> uh, congratulations. The first thing I wanted to ask Quid, how are you so good at this game? Oh. Oh, I just play a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. River, how is he so good at this game? Uh, Ari's quiz champion, so he's really good at Ari, so. So it's just the Ari? Yeah, just quid is good. <laughs> uh, quid, I did just find out you're a player of the series for your team, so congratulations. Oh, thank you. Um, you had a really tough loss to C9 uh, a few days ago. How did you guys recover? Oh... Uh... Individually, I just watch replay and I realize I just play like um, more, I, I could play more aggressive in lane page. So that's why we didn't have mid prior. So that's why our game was too hard to play against C9 game. So and after against energy, after first game, I felt like, um, my lane page is totally fine, and I feel comfortable. That's why I could play you today. Yeah. Well, congratulations again, player of the series.
For River, obviously, I did hear you were sick earlier this week, so you weren't able to practice as much with the team um, before the C9 loss. How did you and the team recover from the loss to have the victory today? Uh, when I play against C9, I was really sick, so yeah, didn't do anything against C9, but even today, is, uh, Ella is sick too, today, and me, so yeah, we're just better than them, so <laughs> we won. Well, now you have a week to recover, you know, so I hope no one else gets sick, uh, but excellent performance today, so thank you. Yeah. Um, Going forward, uh, who would you want to face in the lower bracket or in the lower bracket going forward? Uh, both team fine. Maybe Team Liquid and Dignitas, right? Yeah. Both team fine. We can win. So yeah, we're gonna win anyway. So it doesn't matter. Do you agree, Quid? Uh, yes, I agree. All right, cool. Well, congratulations to both of you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank, Thank you so much. Oh, are you okay? He's nervous. Keep your seven. Oh, okay. Keep your seven. Your seven? Yes. All right. Uh, and now wow. we have an interview with NRG Who He. Thank you so much for taking the time to. Yeah, of course. Um, so, obviously, really tough loss today. Uh, what do you think went wrong in this game against 100 Thieves? Um, I think 100 Thieves just showed up better as a team and individual. Um, we were struggling a lot in regular split as well, and I think we were getting better, but I think we just didn't completely solve our issues yet. Um, and I think that just showed in the, in the series as well. So, yeah, I think we know what we have to focus on, but it's just sad that our season's over now. As much as you can say, uh, because obviously you're the latest addition to kind of the core uh, championship roster, um, what was the kind of internal vibe on NRG like, and what was the most difficult thing for you guys since you had a really kind of, you had some really, really high highs as well, um, and then obviously some really tough losses. So what was going on internally? Um, I think when I first joined the team, it was a bit hard for me to like kind of get used to it um, because they just won the LCS championship and also had a really great showing at Worlds. So I think the external vision and the internal, like I was just trying to like kind of fit into them. Um, but after the break, I think uh, we just lost a lot of skills that we had and we just kind of failed to maintain like from the previous season. So like we kind of had to start from the beginning and that just took a bit of a time and uh, yeah, it just ate up some time. And then going forward, what do you think the thing you've improved on has been the most uh, that you can carry into summer split? Um, I think just kind of like playing uh, right now, I think with my team, we are playing different style than I'm used to. So um, now I have a better idea um, and my team also has a better idea how to play around me as well. So I think we're just kind of, kind of get, getting used to each other still. Um, and I think just that will change a lot for the next split. All right, well, thank you so much for taking the time. Again, I'm sorry about the loss. And we'll throw it back to the Analyst Lounge to close out the day. Thank you, Emily Huhi. But we have Sniper. Yeah. Solo kill master, solo kill leader still. Yeah. Do you know what your record is when you get a solo kill in a game? Well, what do you mean by, like, my record? At yeah, so, like, game? how many... What is your win-loss when you get a solo kill? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's, like... 85% or oh, something like that. Damn, that's oh really my close. Yeah. It's seven and one. <laughs> yes. Wait, I'm seven yeah, and one, seven and one when you get a solo kill. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Wait, that's 85%. No? That's pretty close, right. yeah. I mean, it's I can't do that exact math. I can't math. do that math. That's it's not 80, up for me. Isn't it like 82 and a half? Oh, now you're trying to do that. 87 and a half, I'm just told. Close. Oh, okay. okay um, I heard quickly that you were, you typed something uh, in a 2v1 situation that you were in topside. Can you elaborate what happened up there? Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> so after I solo killed them in the Jax versus GP matchup, okay. second game, um, they decided to like dive me top with, I think it was, it was like Ari, Zinzal, and Jax even. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I like kind of dodged the Ari charm and then we killed Ari and Zinzal. Yeah. And after that, I was like, twitch.tv slash general sniper. <laughs> as soon as like I solo killed them and yeah, did everything. <laughs> And that was it. The series just ended right there. We didn't actually end up playing all five games. Um, <laughs> so how do you feel now 
with this victory? Because it's probably been a whirlwind, like, three days for your whole team. With the C9 series into only having one day to prepare and potentially being eliminated to actually clutching up and winning the series to move on. Uh, I mean, it definitely feels good, but I still feel like I'm not playing as good as I was during the split. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't exactly know why, to be honest. Like, mm. I don't even, like, feel that nervous before the game start. So I think as soon as I, like, fix the issue on, like, just how kind of like bad I've been playing recently, I'll, yeah, well, we're going to be whoever we play next. And do you feel a difference between, of course, like the best of ones, regular season, you get on stage, you play against, of course, like just one team. A lot of times people don't practice against a specific team, but like the difference between the feel in game playing in a regular season versus playoffs? I, I mean, the Cloud9 series, I definitely felt like that, mm -hmm. where like, well, like a best out of five is really different than just playing a best out of one. Um, so, as soon as I got like that experience, I quickly just like adapted to it, and yeah, we ended up winning the best out of five. True, energy. makes sense. Yeah, so yeah. How does this align with your? I know I talked to you at, like the very start of the split. How does this moment right now align with your expectations of where you'd be in your first split of LCS? Before the split started, I was definitely like kind of 50-50 about how I was gonna play. Yeah. But as soon as we started winning, I knew that like we, we could actually we have a chance at winning it all. Yeah. So. It's definitely better than I expected it to be. Mm, that's great to hear. So we got, we got player of the series. Uh, who, who do you think it is? Let me guess. Quid River, Quid River. <laughs> One of those two, you know. Yeah, it's Quid. Yep. He, he did pop off this series. 18, 2, honesty. and 21. I actually series. think it's more. That's only in the three wins. Because he had right. a bunch of kills in the losses as well. That's you true. You can see on the lower left there, that's uh, in the three wins. 18 kills, two deaths, 21 assists. The speed Vagar. I got a question for you, actually. What happened to the Smolder in this series? Because it looked like Quid pressed R on it in game two, and then no one picked it the rest of the series. Oh. I'm not even sure, to be honest. I, I have no <laughs> idea why, like, Smolder wasn't played anymore after the second. Fair enough. I mean, Quid definitely popped off in so many ways. What's the energy like with those two, Quid River, Quid River, in game for you? Because I know probably at the start of the split, you maybe were worried about a language barrier, but they just did a full English language interview with Emily. How is it during games? I mean, they've been amazing, honestly. Like, I couldn't ask for better teammates than what I have with uh, Quid and River. And I, I mean, they just work so well together. They have like the the Korean synergy, mm -hmm. and they've just been doing so good. Now, a question that I have for you, because this series was definitely wild. I don't know if this is what you kind of expected going into it, that energy would be so close. But uh, there were some losses that you were taking that I was like, ooh, like, how can they re recover, right? Yeah. Um, but you guys were easily able to recover going into game five. like. Is it something that the coaches say? Like, generally, how, what's the vibe going back into uh, the team room in reviews? And just, like, how are you guys able to basically keep a calm mental overall? I mean, after game four, like, I honestly thought the reason we lost was because of me. Mm -hmm. So I expected, like, some criticism, but nobody cared. Like, everybody just moved on. Didn't care that I, like, threw the game. They just were like, okay, just go next. Yeah. We'll win next game, and yeah. That's, what, that's it. what happened in game four, actually? No, I just... I mean, okay, so the ending, like, instead of just playing for the team fight and zoning out Lee Sin, so we get Baron. Right, mm. okay, that, that's the moment. You're not talking about the general game, we're talking about the very end of it when there is the Baron flip. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that makes sense. About. Is that... Do you like that? Because I feel like a lot of the times if you, like, if, you, if you feel like you messed up and you go to the back, you're like, someone please say it. <laughs> someone please point it out. Yeah. Or uh, do I mean, you like the vibe that people are just pushing on to the next? Uh... The first one, I think, like, mm -hmm. people just directly giving me, like, feedback yeah. definitely helps me more, like, just becoming, uh, I guess, like, a stronger player. Yeah. So, yeah, it just felt weird that nobody said anything. Tell me the vibes of the coaches, because it, we always get a glimpse of the coach cams yeah. during the game, and Spooks in particular is just, like, a roller coaster <laughs> of emotions. <laughs> I don't know if he hides it yeah. after a game. Um, let's, like, talk to, talk to me about, like, what they say in between games, like, Basically, what are the reviews like going back after a game during a series? Mm. And are they calm? I'm, ex I'm assuming <laughs> that's the case. I mean, they're extremely calm. Mm -hmm. I think uh, both like Spooks and Golden Glue. Yeah. Like, I also couldn't ask for better coaches than these two right here. Mm -hmm. They just like keep everyone's mental together, and they kind of just like, I don't know. They're just like perfect coaches. I, I don't. I don't really know what to tell you. You know, <laughs> all, they always have good energy and good mm -hmm. vibes. Love your energy as well. Here's the bracket for the rest of the playoffs. Hundred Thieves has eliminated energy. We will not have defending champions. 
Thanks, General Sniper. So you're, you're going to be playing the winner of Dignitas TL on Friday. Important to keep that in mind. Next week's playoffs is going to be on Friday, Saturday before Fly Question C9. So five teams remaining. Really great to have you on here. Congratulations on the win. And I don't think, I mean, I don't think you threw game four. I can understand why they wouldn't bring it up. There's a lot, there's a lot that happened in game there's four. Maybe it happened. was a mistake. There's a lot of mistakes in that game. So yeah. congratulations once again on the five-game victory. That is it for us. We're going to be back tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific for Dig versus TL. So let's send it over to the LCS Challenger stream. Good night. Bye. Fighting. Where did he go? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. That's yeah, land that flash, land that flash. Penta, Penta? Yeah, Penta, Penta. Yeah, Penta, Penta. Penta, Penta. Yeah, Penta, Penta. Yeah, Penta, Penta. You hit these. Nice, nice, nice. 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 Wow, Penta kill. The tower only has one hit, but they don't even need it. There's the Encore coming out there from Ayla, trying to actually root him up. Not going to be able to do so, but Dokla is going to fall. No way out for him. Energy are gone. 100 Thieves. I didn't get to guys. I want to kick some other Just kill Ari, kill, kill Tile Faker. Look at me. Oh. 1.1k AP. Uh. Uh. Second charge here. Oh my oh. god! Trish King Rim from a man is nasty! Right. <laughs> That's the most impressive mechanical play out of the Can we fight? Yeah, fight, yeah, fight, fight. We should, we should, we should. Look at Nathan. Bass, Oriana no ulti. Oriana no ulti. Paris no flash. Renekton? Holy crap, good. Are we on? Maybe. And Sniper is there to finish him off. Sniper low in health. Pathmaker forward, gonna be able to flip back one. Meech is down. It's up to FBI though. Quinn is piling through. The resets are here. And energy. Oh, he's going forward. There's a flash. He gets three. Quinn immediately into the stasis, but Palafox in trouble as well. Quinn is down. FBI takes him out. But it's River who gets the resets. Can River do anything on the other side? He's down as well. Energy have won the fight. Language before that game four, right? But coming off the. はい、ロックダウンはい、ロックダウンはい、ロックダウンはい、ロックダウンはい、ロックダウンはい、ロックダウンはい、ロックダウンはい、ロックダウンはい、ロックダウンはい、ロックダウンはい、ロックダウンは